Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we're going to take a look at a very early example of a ready-to-go, out-of-the-box competition race gun. This is a Yama, or Llama, M87, manufactured by Gabilando Isia in Spain. This one's actually in 7.65mm Parabellum even, which is pretty cool, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, this is essentially the same base pistol as the Yama M82, which was the winner of Spanish military, the Spanish army pistol trials in the early to mid 1980s. Uh, Yama is one of the trifecta of major Spanish gun makers that survived after World War II, and not content to just make a military contract, and by the way I have a previous video on the M82 if you'd like to take a look at what this pistol looked like in military form, I'll link to that at the end of this video, but Yama wanted to, well Gabilando Isia, the company who owned the Yama trademark, they wanted to sell these pistols on the commercial market, and with IPSC becoming a popular sport, Yama takes a look at all of the things that shooters are doing to try and make their pistols better to improve their scores, and what they essentially did was stick all of that stuff on the M87 here and market it as an out of the box, ready to go uh, IPSC pistol that's got all the bells and whistles already. And they actually did a really good job of it. Now. Uh, it was an expensive pistol at the time, in the mid-1990s, or in the early 1990s, this had a price tag of $1,450, which if we translate that into, well in today's money that's a bit over $3,000, last year it would have been about $2,800, but putting that in today's context, that's a really expensive pistol. And there were a couple other things, other shortcomings to it, which we'll get to in a moment. But first, let's take a look up close at what this is, and what sort of cool goodies Gabilando Isia put into it. Let's start with a quick comparison shot here. This is our M87 competition pistol. This is the M82, the military sidearm uh, parallel. Mechanically they're both the same, they're both fundamentally copies of the Beretta Model 92. But it Virtually every single little detail is different on the 87, and better. First off, a quick look at the markings. Gabilando Isia, the manufacturer out of Vitoria, España. Note also we have two little locking, two little uh, gripping serrations up here so that you can do your cool press check kind of deal. There's our serial number. This is a late import gun, or late manufacturer gun. 1993 here represents 1993 is the date of production. On the other side we have the trademark name, Yama, and the caliber which is 765 Parabellum. On the M82 it was, there's actually an M82 mark down here. On the 87s there is no specific mark, it doesn't actually say M87 anywhere on the gun. In case you are not familiar with the caliber, here is 765 Parabellum, here's 9mm Parabellum. As the name suggests, the uh, actually <laughs> the 9mm is simply 765 Parabellum necked up to 9mm in diameter. They are essentially the same overall length, which means it's easy to have them both in the same magazine, in the same action. Uh, the 9mm is actually a little bit more powerful of a cartridge, so any gun that can run 9 can be easily modified, uh, well easily redesigned I should say, to run 7.65 Parabellum. Looking at other features here, first off we have a muzzle weight that has been added to the end of the barrel, so your barrel's a little bit longer, uh, maybe three quarters of an inch, two centimeters longer. It's got a nice big square uh, front sight on it to give you a good crisp sight picture. This is not a compensator. Uh, with a gun like this there really isn't the need for compensation ports in it, but the muzzle weight helps keep the muzzle down uh, and reduce climb between shots. The rear sight is fully click adjustable for elevation and windage. You've got some dots to help you line it up there. It's a nice big square uh, rear sight. Now the, the M82 sights were pretty good, but these things are really excellent competition sights that you would not need to change if you were buying this in the early 90s. Now we have an ambidextrous slide mounted safety here. On the M82 this also functioned as a decocker, so if I put the M82 into safe like this it would drop the hammer. However, for IPSC it is much more desirable to be able to carry the gun cocked and locked so that your first shot has that nice short crisp single action trigger pull, and so that's how they designed this guy. 
Note that we also have adjustable trigger over travel there, and holy cow this is a really nice trigger. So we've, it's two stage, there's a little bit of take up here, and then a very crisp break right there. And if I hold the trigger back, cycle the slide, the reset is just that. It's really nice. The double action is good too. Um, the double action is really quite nice, but the single action trigger is is the money, as they'd say. In a few of these areas you can get a better feel for the improvements of the M87 by looking at the 87 and the 82 side by side. So notice that we have a longer beaver tail to help protect the back of the hand. We have a screw here to help adjust uh, the, the trigger and hammer travel, and they've actually serrated the back of the slide to prevent it from reflecting any glare, which of course they wouldn't have bothered to do, didn't bother to do on the military pistols. We have an oversized or extended magazine release, and it can be swapped from side to side, so you can put that wherever it works best for you. Now this slide mounted safety is nicely functional, it no longer decocks the pistol, but slide mounted safeties are something that a lot of really serious competition shooters really look down their nose at. What they want is a 1911 style thumb safety on the frame. And so Yama went ahead and added that in, or Gabilando added that in as well. So you, it's not ambidextrous, but on the, the right hander side of the pistol you have a thumb safety as well. So both safeties work. Um, this, the slide safety works just like the M82's safety where it actually pivots the rear part of the firing pin out of orientation with the hammer. So the hammer will fall when the safety is uh, engaged, but there's nothing up here for it to actually hit. There's no firing pin for it to hit. With the frame mounted safety it prevents the trigger from actually falling. Whew, there's a lot of stuff here. Moving along we have a rubber base pad added to the bottom of the magazine as a buffer because they expected you to be dropping it uh, to reload quickly. This is a 15 round capacity, and that's the same whether it's in 9 or 7.65 Parabellum. And they also went ahead and beveled the magazine well. You can see that here on the 87 compared to the squared off magazine well of the military M82. It's not a lot of beveling, but it's a little bit, and it would help you funnel magazines in there just a little bit quicker. And then they've also added serrations to the back strap of the grip, where the M82 was just smooth. That is really quite a lot of fancy stuff being added into the pistol, and as I said at the beginning, Yama went ahead, or Gabalando went ahead and put all that stuff in the gun right out of the box. So all the things you would normally have to spend a bunch of extra money on to update and improve and upgrade your pistol, uh, not if you bought an M87. Uh, just a quick look at the mechanics up here. The spring is captive. The barrel is not going to come out unless I pull punch that pin out to take out the muzzle, take off the muzzle weight, but you can see the Beretta style uh, locking wedge right there. And if you want to know all of the nonsense that's going on inside the fire control group of this, check out my video on the M82 because it's kind of a mess to disassemble, and I'm not going to do it a second time here. Production of the M87 began basically at the same time as the M82, 1986. Uh, it was first imported into the US in 1987. Production would continue until 1997, a total of 10 years, although importation into the US ended in 1993, and that was largely because of the assault weapons ban. Uh, this was passed in the US in 1994, and it prohibited importation or manufacture of magazines that held more than 10 rounds. The gun wasn't a problem, but the magazines were. Now this being already a very expensive pistol that was having limited commercial success, um, that was pretty much the death knell for importation of the M87. And in fact all of the Spanish gun companies would be basically out of business within a few years of this happening. Now there are a couple other things that were limiting commercial sales of the M87. As IPSC competition continued to evolve, uh, people were starting to put optics on their pistols, and this generally meant a frame mounted optic that kind of wrap, with a mount that would wrap up over the top of the slide. Uh, very much competition race gun style of stuff, and the M87 wasn't really set up for that. A lot of other gun makers, people like Para Ordnance, like STI, were embracing that, and that was giving them a, an advantage over the Spanish. 
In addition, the M87 wasn't available in a major caliber, so it wasn't available in 40, 140 came around, uh, wasn't available in 45 ACP, it was limited to just 9mm Parabellum and 7.65 Parabellum. And while 7.65 Parabellum makes for a magnificent shooting, incredibly fun and controllable pistol, it was of no particular benefit in IPSC. You were better off with 9 than 7.65, and there was a lot of, of interest in major caliber because that provided more points and a scoring benefit. So between all of these things, the magazine importation issues, the uh, excessively high price of the gun, and its limitation in some of the areas that IPSC was continuing to grow into, 93 was the end of importation, 97 was the end of production overall. So it's very cool to get a chance to take a look at one of these in person. A big thanks to the viewer who loaned this one to me for filming. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.